What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. Now with this video, we're jumping into Suicide Squad issue number 8. Now if you haven't been keeping up with this line, go ahead, check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything going on Suicide Squad. Now I wanted to let you guys know that I will be taking a little tiny weekend vacation, more of a weekday. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, I will not be posting up some videos. I know there's a whole bunch of DC content that came out this week, and we will definitely get to it. But I gotta take some time off, I gotta go help a friend, do a favor. But don't fret, we're gonna be back, we're gonna be covering a whole bunch of stuff. I will put out some full storylines while I'm gone. I'll have those uploaded and ready to go before I even head out. Now in the last issue of Suicide Squad, we saw Ambush Bug. Now Ambush Bug, he is a fourth wall breaker. And more or less, he really is the first fourth wall breaker when it comes to comic books. And he's a character that doesn't get utilized, not nearly as much. Now, me personally, like I've said in the last issue, I'm not a big fan of the fourth wall breakers. Be it Deadpool, Ambush Bug, I don't really care. I just, I'm not a fan of it. I don't like it. But for this Suicide Squad story, it's really, it, it's, it's bearable. At least for me. <laughs> But I know a lot of you guys out there, you love this stuff, you love the fourth wall, so without further ado, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, we are getting narration from Ambush Bug. And right now, he's just going over the chain of events that have brought us to exactly where we are. Because right now, the Suicide Squad have found themselves in hell, going after the Rock of Eternity. Now, if you want to find out how the Rock of Eternity got there in the first place, be sure to check out the new issue of Shazam that I just posted up. And right now, there are two different Suicide Squads. There is the one that is in hell being run by Superboy, aka Match, the Bizarro clone. And then there is Peacemaker. He had been sent to India to try to track down the Green, the one known as the Swamp Thing. And that is another series that if you guys have not been checking out, you are severely missing out. Ram V is done, doing some of the best writing out of DC Comics right now. It really is a phenomenal story, and I can tell a lot of you have not been watching it just by looking at the views on, this, on the Swamp Thing storyline. So I'm telling you, go do yourself a favor and go freaking watch it. But Peacemaker was sent in to try to track down and capture the Swamp Thing. Now he learned very quickly that wasn't going to happen. And what the Swamp Thing did was took out the detonator in his neck. Taking out that explosive, he gave free will to him. He gave Peacemaker the opportunity to truly have some peace. And he tells him that to, to just walk away. You don't have to try to capture me. You don't have to do this fight. Because if you continue to do this fight, you are going to die. You are going to lose this fight. And this is your opportunity to walk away from this all clean and clear. Now, Amanda Waller, she is currently on the run from all of the U.S. government. She went rogue. That's the simplest way to put it. And right now, she is hiding out on an island with the rest of her team. And that's because Amanda Waller, she has much, much deeper plans. Well, to us, it looks extremely sinister. It looks like she is the worst person imaginable. And things are only going to begin to look worse, especially from our perspective. But Amanda Waller, she has a much bigger play. And that's because she's trying to create the Justice League that's going to serve on Earth 3. Seeing that this Earth is a lost cause, she wants to truly be able to protect something. And if she can't protect this Earth, she is going to go to an Earth that needs a Justice League and needs true protection. And so right now, Amanda Waller, she's trying to figure out why she has no communications when it comes to Peacemaker. Not sure if they're being jammed, not sure if it's caused by the green, but right now she is very unhappy. Now this is where Dr. Rodriguez steps in, trying to give some kind of information to Amanda Waller. Her hoping that it's good information, but it's, it's really not. The fact of the matter is, she believes that Talon is truly insane, that there is no bringing him back for the brink that he has already gone through. 
that whatever he endured, whatever happened to him, there is no reversing it. Now we know as the reader that he has been working for Rick Flagg, that he has been a secret spy sent in to find out what it, what Amanda Waller is actually up to. Now Amanda Waller, she doesn't really care because at the end of the day, she is still going to utilize him. She is still going to use him. She's going to be sending him down to hell with the rest of the Suicide Squad. And so she tells Dr. Rodriguez that she needs to prepare Talon to be sent down there. And with Amanda Waller walking out of the room, the good doctor lets us know that she knows Talon is not actually crazy, that he is doing an act. And what's more is she knows that he is communicating with the outside world. And it seems that his plan is to bring down Amanda Waller. And Dr. Rodriguez wants to help with that because she has seen the, the lengths that Amanda Waller has gone to, believing it to be unethical, believing her to gone just way too far. She is going to do whatever is necessary to try and stop Amanda Waller. But that's what drops us down into hell. And we pick up with the Suicide Squad versus the Hell Squad. Now the Hell Squad, it is being led by Mind Warp. And if you guys remember, he actually died some issues back. And it appears that he went straight to hell. And when he went down there, he recruited disgruntled Suicide Squad employees to try to get some revenge. But we learn that Amanda Waller is responsible. Because Amanda Waller told them that the Suicide Squad was on their way. Having Dr. Rodriguez work on some kind of new initiative. This was the first opportunity to test out her work. So kind of a two birds, one stone situation. And so the fight is breaking out with everybody branching off and taking somebody on. We see a knife that is plunged into Culebra's neck. With Culebra going down, she dies right there on the spot. And everything is going sideways. The Suicide Squad, they are slowly losing ground. And this is where we see Match, he just loses it. Flying up in the sky, using his heat vision, he clears a path so Ambush Bug can make it to the Rock of Eternity. With him making it to the Rock of Eternity, he's not sure what he's supposed to do here. Amanda Waller didn't really give great guidance, but she is giving it now. Because she didn't come for the entire Rock of Eternity. She came for a sample of something off of the Rock of Eternity. Now while all of that is transpiring, we see Dr. Rodriguez and Talon. And with her escorting Talon into the room, getting ready to teleport him all the way down to hell, he is getting teleported in with someone else. He gets teleported in with major force. And with major force stepping onto the battlefield, there is a new sheriff in town. Now Talon looking around seeing that his friend, the person he cares about, Culebra, has been murdered right here on the spot. Talon goes even crazier starts cutting people up left and right. But as Talon turns around, he sees that Culebra is standing up. Well, at least her spirit is standing up because Culebra, she died. And when she died, she went straight to hell, a place that she's already at. And this is where Culebra realizes that she actually is a bad guy because she ended up in hell. But right now, Black Canary is keeping all of her power on Mind Warp trying to keep him down, trying to keep him out of the fight as long as possible, we see Branch come up behind her and close her mouth. But Match gets the opportunity to grab Mind Warp, and he is about to pulverize him. But this is when Noctura comes in, comes in and manipulates the mind of Match, makes him drop down to his knees and make him a sliveling pile of nothingness. But that doesn't stop major force from completely smashing in the brains of Mind Warp. And just like that, this fight is done, this fight is over with. With all of the Hell Squad now being released from Mind Warp, they're trying to figure out why they're here, how they ended up here, what is going on. But Major Force lets everybody know that this is fine, that Amanda Waller is not done with everybody yet. We see him slam down a rod into the ground, and it starts glowing a bright, bright green. And every individual that is a soul, anybody that is not actually alive, we see them start getting sucked into this. And that includes Culebra as well. With Major Force grabbing the body of Culebra, he says that it's time to exfil. It's time to get out of here because the mission is now complete. Now, picking back up with Amanda Waller, 
we find out that what Ambush Bug had procured for her is a sample of, of the metaphysical shield that protects the Rock of Eternity. Now, it's going to take them a little bit of while to try and reverse engineer this thing. But once they're able to, they're going to be able to protect Earth-3 from interdimensional invasions. And so with, with essentially everything being taken care of from below, they now have to worry about some kind of invasion from space, some way to protect the planet, like Iron Man would say, be able to put a suit around the Earth. And that is going to be their next mission. Now, picking back up with our suicide squad that is on the beach, no longer in hell, in this little paradise, if you will, we have Ambush Bug really just divulging everything that he currently knows. Letting Bloodsport know that Waller has a way of walling off Earth 3 from metaphysical invasions and that they're going to be sent into space so they can stop physical invasions. Now, Bloodsport, he goes up to Major Force and he wants to know, what did you do to Calabro? What did you do to all of their souls? And Major Force lets us know that all of them are actually going to be fine. And that's where we pick up with Calabro waking up. She wakes up and she finds Amanda Waller standing directly above her. And what has happened is the DoD had intercepted some Lazarus resin. They confiscated enough wake-up juice to bring back people from the dead. And so the good news is that they no longer have to have a bomb in their neck. But if she wants to stay alive, she's going to have to be more at the compound. She's going to need more of that Lazarus resin. And what Amanda Waller has done is she has ended death for the Suicide Squad. That no longer death is going to stop you from being a part of this team. That she will just bring you back to life and use you again. And this is where we see surrounding them is tons and tons of bodies of previous Suicide Squad members. Having their souls and having this Lazarus resin, it is the perfect combination to continue bringing back Suicide Squad members as you need them. And though this is harsh, cruel, unthinkable, this is Amanda Waller and the extent she is willing to go to to ensure that she has everything she needs to protect Earth 3 and create this perfect Earth. Now we're picking up with Peacemaker, currently out of comms, unable to connect with with Amanda Waller, with anybody at this point, but he doesn't know what he's going to do. But he does know that he is walking away from the Suicide Squad, telling Amanda Waller that she can do her worst. But this is when he hears a voice behind him, the voice of Rick Flagg telling him he knows exactly what he is going to do because he is a member of the Suicide Squad and they are about to bring some peace down on Amanda Waller. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. You know, obviously, I'm loving this line. I'm loving the Suicide Squad line as a whole. And it's specifically because of, of the craziness Amanda Waller is willing to go to. The extents that she is willing to breach and, and the walls she is willing to break down to be able to create this perfect world. This world where she creates a Suicide Squad, but in turn, she makes them the Justice League. They take down the crime syndicate, replace them with this Justice League, with this Suicide Squad, and give them all the opportunity they would never have on their own Earths. And so while you could definitely see it as Amanda Waller being the evil, bad person in this story, She's also the hero of the story. In a, a weird anti-hero way, she is doing what is the best option for Earth 3. Now we know Rick Flag, Peacemaker, they are all going to try to stop her. Seeing the events of Future State, we saw that she was not able to do so. With everything going on with Shazam and Wonder Woman, it makes us question, is Amanda Waller actually going to be able to do this feat? Is she going to be able to pull all of this off like she did in Future State? Or is someone going to stop her? But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you have not yet, do me a favor, hit that sub button. Hit that notification bell. Make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. And until the next breakdown.